Today I thought we'd have a look at the landscape and how we can make our layouts look more three-dimensional. For regular viewers of this channel, you'll have seen this board before um, and also when I did a previous video on laying out the back scene. Um, on this board, I did the um, improving your track uh, video um, and there are the main up and down lines and also uh, a siding here that I want to use as a parcels line. But a great deal of layouts that I see are kind of two dimensional. They, they have no real height. So what I wanted to do in this area was build a hillside and then go off from this hillside to the next board, um, which would be onto a viaduct. So what I've come up with is this plan. These are, it's true military style this, these uh, six boards here, sorry, seven boards here, make up um, Chadwick. So I've got this board here, which is board one, Board two is the station, board three is the, is the bend, four would be where the viaduct is that I'm planning, five and six, well these two boards here are the old Chadwick, um, which was the automated um, loco shed, which used to be Chadwick TMD, and then a joining board at the bottom. So at this end here, I wanted to run on this board, which is board one, um, through a cutting through a hillside, across a viaduct, and then into the old Chadwick. So it would kind of, the track would kind of go along and then over a viaduct. And then looking a little closer at this board here, at this uh, configuration here. Um, the green is obviously the hillside. So I'm going to build a large hillside here, a smaller hillside here with the cutting running straight through the middle where the two lines go and then out across the next board and across a viaduct and hopefully that will all kind of make sense. So this is the area where I want to build that hillside. And the cunning plan is we have a gentle hill coming up here and then it rises to up to a much steeper hill going off into the distance. Um, and then it will slope down this way um, and off into the next board, which is the, uh, the viaduct. Over in this direction, we've got um, the Chadwick Parkway, the out of town station. Um, and it all converges into these two final tracks that go um, off, like I say, into the countryside. What I have found, and I've made the same mistake myself in the past, is that lots of layouts have too much track. Now, when you've got a you know, limited amount of uh, space, then naturally you are going to put more track in because playing trains is what it's all about. When you've got a little more space, then you can be um, a little more extravagant with the countryside. And of course, whenever you go on a train, you're not trundling through cities all the time. Most tracks go out into the countryside. So as I come out of Chadwick Parkway, it goes into two lines off into the countryside with fields and cows and farms and uh, the odd country pub. And that kind of, that's the kind of feel I'm after. And as the, uh, the back scene kind of runs into the countryside, and looks more green. And, uh, and that's what I'm kind of hoping to do. So I'm left with a dilemma now of obviously what to build it. Uh, from. So, you know, I've got some choices. Uh, I've looked at paper mache, cardboard strips, plaster of Paris, you know, building formers. Um, but what I thought I would do is come up with a very cheap and cheerful alternative that hopefully we can all use, and that is polystyrene. Of course, we all get it in packaging. Um, so, what I've done up to now is I've just kind of shaped it roughly. So, this is the edge that will go along the, the track. There's a, a siding here, which is the old parcels line, and that will kind of end in this area. So, oops, he, he pokes it under the back scene. Um, so this will kind of go here. So now what I have to do is kind of shape this so it runs up and then up into the hillside and looks quite natural. So the next thing is to figure out what kind of tool I'm gonna use to cut this down. Because in the past, I've used a uh, uh, what do you call it, bread knives and carving knives, and I've got myself into a hell of a mess. Um, so this time I'm going to try an electric uh, hot wire cutter. We'll see how that goes. Also worth a mention at this time is what to do with this face. Well, as the lines go through the cutting, 
I thought I would have these uh, Metcalf uh, wall sheets and I would put these around the cutting to kind of give it the right, uh, make it of the right fabric. Um, but I don't think this will stick particularly well to polystyrene. So what I thought I would do once I get this shape correct, I'll then put a piece of card around it and glue that on and then glue this onto the card um, to make sure there are no undulations, um, which I might get if I'm putting this straight onto there. And we'll see how that, uh, how that shapes up. So here's the little beauty. It's um, a hot wire foam cutter from Woodland Scenics. And when I bought this, I also bought um, some replacement wire, 48 inches of uh, replacement wire, just in case I ran out. So let's open up this thing and uh, we'll kind of have a little look what's in here. And bits are falling out already. So we have um, a mains power pack and the reason I particularly wanted a mains power pack is, uh, sorry, a mains uh, powered hot wire cutter is I'd used the battery powered one before and I find they lack power and also you're forever running out of batteries. So I thought I'll bite the bullet, I won't buy cheap because I'll end up buying twice. So I bought a kind of medium range one and I'll put this together and uh, see what it looks like. Okay, now. Just for a change, I've been very brave and I've read the instructions, which were quite, uh, quite good really. Um, you insert these two rods into this housing, do them up with these little thumbnails, get a bit of wire, thread it across the, 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 two, uh, the two arms as it were, and that should do it. And then all you, I suppose you do is you drag this through the polystyrene. You can't get it very, very extremely taut, but I'm not too sure that that's what you'd want in the first place. There are some little collars which can slide up and down and that way you can get the cutter to cut at an angle. But we'll, uh, we'll see if we need that. Anyway, um, oh, the wire in, in the package was 26 inches long and you probably use six inches at a go. So um, it was useful buying the extra wire um, because um, the wire itself, when you put it down, it's actually quite hard to see because it is so fine. Um, so uh, when you've cut it, put the wire back in the packet, uh, otherwise you may mislay it. So I've plugged the little power supply in, so we'll plug this into here. And that goes in there, and there are a couple of safe, well, a safety precaution, and that is just to mention that when you cut polystyrene, it could give off toxic fumes, excuse me while I cough, <clears throat> um, could give off toxic fumes and um, using a valve vented area. Now this is obviously the on switch here and I don't know if you could see that little bit of smoke that came off it. So now if I pull it across, oh blimey look at that. Hey, I do like this. This is rather interesting isn't it? So if I, oh I've put a little GoPro camera in the corner of this layout now so uh, you might be able to see <clears throat> from a different angle if that footage kind of records. So if I go wide on this camera and then hopefully you can see um, how I'm attempting to do it. So I want to take this side down. The trouble is of course if you mess it up you can't, well you can glue it back on can't you? So I press the button and I want this hill to go down here into nothing really so you can feel it pulling if you're going through too quickly. Um, yeah, this is quite simple really. Even I could manage this. Right, so what's the most difficult thing I need to do really is to straighten up this curve. Excuse me while I adjust the camera now. You go wide on there with the camera, there it is. And then hopefully you can See what I'm doing, let me bring it up. So, what I'm trying to do now is to straighten out this piece here. This would be a challenge because it's obviously quite thick. Oh, 
I suppose the other thing to not to forget is that this wire is going to get hot and of course you don't want to burn your fingers. So it comes away quite easily. <coughs> so what I'm trying to do now is get this vertical. So let's see if I can get that better. <clears throat> and of course the easiest way to do this is just to nibble at it slowly isn't it so that you don't take too much off in one go otherwise you could uh, ruin the contours whilst it might appear to be somewhat messy with these little bits coming off rest assured it's a lot darn sight cleaner than it is than trying to use a carving knife well now it's starting to take shape, um, this is still too steep um, and I think this still is still too high and um, I've taken a little more off of this edge than I, I wanted originally planned so now I have to take a little bit more off this edge then um, to, uh, to get it to sit right. Um, I've put a little GoPro camera in the corner so hopefully that will give you a, a little a better, better angle on um, on how the hill is kind of shaping up um, and this now needs to come back here so I need to take off a fair amount of this face here um, this tool is a cracking little device actually um, it's, I found it best to have a dustbin nearby because otherwise you get surrounded by these little kind of off cuts which you don't really want um, and it's of course it's very much a judge it by eye kind of routine and you don't want it to be too uniform otherwise it just wouldn't look kind of natural um, so there we go the hill has shrunk considerably um, it's in place and um, I've, I've kind of toned it down to sort of feather it out into the landscape um, but made it into a bit of a mound then hopefully then it will flow back up into the other hillside um, on the other side I've kept it almost vertical um, for the retaining wall um, and um, I did use a, a knife just to bring this one down a bit because it was so wide but without that um, little hot wire cutter it must have, it would have been very difficult so that was a little bonus I quite enjoyed doing that it made a, a nice change trying out a different kind of tool um, and I've also cut this piece here reasonably low so that um, you can actually see into this siding. If this had been so much higher, then clearly you wouldn't have been able to see the, uh, the buffer stop at the end of the, of the parcels line. So uh, I think that's, that's pretty good. So what am I going to do next? Well, next, I um, think I'm going to paint the top of this with um, a poly filler. Um, it'll, it'll mask off some of the some of the marks that, that are still on it. There's a crack here where the where the polystyrene joins. So I'm going to paint it over with a poly filler, and I'll probably mix up some paint in the poly filler so that I'll get a, a base coat underneath. Um, and then, as I said before, I'll then set about putting um, a piece of card on that edge to give it a, a foundation for the Metcalf brick, brickwork. Um, so there we go. Anyway, I'll, uh, I'll paint this up and mix it up and get back to you. Well, sadly, I didn't quite have the polyfiller I'd, polyfiller I'd hoped for, but I did kind of find a builder's mix, anyway, which was grey. So what I actually did was just painted it on um, and then with a wet paintbrush, and I then went over it and ev evened it out. You can see some of the paint streaks on here, but um, once I put the, all the scenic material on there, that'll kind of soon disappear, which then takes me up to the retaining wall I mentioned I wanted to put a little card um, on the front because um, that will kind of um, give the wall a much better bond but of course then what do you use to stick this piece of card to the polystyrene and I did think about PVA but um, having explored the garage what I did find was some sanitary silicon and I think that will hold it much better and of course it won't go hard and it'll always be have, have some flex in it so if I can just spread some silicon on it we'll see 
how that looks. I just need some kind of a spreader, which is another piece of card. I think I'll pop a little more on than that. Make sure you're wearing old clothes for this, won't you? Because I've, uh, well, I think I'm sure we all have ruined perfectly good t-shirts and got in enormous trouble with our wives. And then offer this up onto the, onto the wall. Yep, good to go. And then pressing that home. Sellotape. So keep it in place. Oops. And hopefully that should go okay. I seem to have a little bit of a dip here. You only notice it once the card's in. The board, the board um, it tends to come in a little bit. And as luck would have it. Beautiful. Now hopefully I can kind of show you that's the kind of where it is, there's a card, and there's a little bit of a gap here um, between the polystyrene and the retaining, with well, the retaining walls card, um, but that's no problem because naturally you would run um, uh, hedging across the edge here. Um, so there we go, and of course I need to put some kind of um, stonework on top of the retaining wall just to give it some kind of capping. Right, I'll get back to you when all this is dried. So I've cut out the um, the Metcalf retaining wall sheets, and I've glued it to the uh, the piece of card uh, that was underneath. That was a good idea. The, the card, having already put the card onto the um, polystyrene, it makes it so much easier just to glue this thin, this quite flimsy card onto the stiffer card that I'd put on before. And I'd used what was lying around the studio, some 3M display mount, which is that isn't that forgiving. Um, if you put it in the wrong place, you do have to whip it off quickly and reposition it because it, uh, it does bond, bind very, very quickly, which is ideal because the last thing you want is this, um, you know, coming away from this cardboard in the fullness of time. Um, I, I measured the sheets and cut them at 27 centimetres so that every nine centimetres I'm going to build uh, a small supporting pillar and that will cover up the gaps in the sheets. Um, and I also extended it around to the buffer stop where the um, the parcels line will be and then along there. Um, so that's kind of coming together. For the capping stones I'm going to use um, Metcalf platform edging um, and I think that will do the job quite well. If I just cut that off, glasses. <clears throat> and that will kind of sit along the edging like that and I think that will work quite well as a kind of as a, as a finishing touch. Behind this of course there will be hedges and then a fence um, to keep any livestock and that kind of thing back out of the way. So all that's left for me to do tonight is to paint this green um, or well, greeny brown so that none of the grey shows through when I start flocking it in the morning. Um, so um, that'll do for today and we'll catch up in the morning. Well overnight the, uh, the green paint has dried and first thing this morning is I fitted this uh, stone plinth along the top of the wall section and now I've just got to fit the last two um, vertical pillars 
onto the retaining wall. And then all I need to do then is just to put a, a little bit of capping stones on top of those. So it's coming together reasonably well now. Um, uh, even though from this side here you actually won't be able to see it from, from where you'll view the railway. But <coughs> invariably I'll run cameras through this and it will look, uh, look the part. Um, along the top here I will end up putting some kind of fence uh, around here. And then I'll obviously put some hedging along there. So the next thing I'm going to do is just to put the, <coughs> sorry, excuse me, putting the capping stones on these two and then I'll flock uh, the whole thing. So that's the wall complete. Um, and before I do flock this, uh, this hillside, what I thought was worth mentioning is how I made the uh, uprights uh, on the walls, the, the pillars. And what I used was simply a piece of balsa wood and then I wrapped the, um, the Metcalf sheeting around it once I'd scored the inside of the card to make it easier to bend and then using these type of clamps to hold it in place whilst the glue dries and the glue I used was the good old favourite Evo Stick Time Bond. Um, so that's what I, what I did with that. Um, I do like static grass but I wouldn't dream of using static grass throughout this field. Um, I like static grass to be in other places like along a siding or at the edge of a field, um, you know, by a gateway, that kind of thing. But the, a, a, a whole field that's going to have and end up with cows on it, it's not a place that I would normally use static grass. I would just kind of use the ordinary um, flock from, I think it's Scenics or something. Anyway, what I'm going to use today is a blend between blended turf, green blend, T49, and blended turf, earth blend which is T50. So what I tend to do is I mix them up into another container until I get the right kind of feel and then I just sprinkle it on and see how it looks and then adjust it from there. So I simply pour um, an even coat of uh, Decorators PVA and this one's made from Dahl from B&Q over the whole of the uh, field area and then uh, with my blends of blends if that makes sense I just sprinkle that throughout the field um, put it on lots of it and then obviously at the end of it I'll just collect the stuff that's left over once it's dried. So here is what I would call the half finished item because what it really does need now is obviously trees, fence posts, farmyard animals and all that kind of stuff that makes it fit in with a model railway. And the good news is I've actually spent very little money on this. Like I say it was a piece of, couple of pieces of polystyrene, um, Metcalf walls and a bit of balsa wood underneath there, some PVA glue and um, of course some scatter. I did pay out for the um, polystyrene hot wire cutter which actually um, I quite enjoyed using that and that'll be a useful tool but obviously you're not going to buy one of those for just a one-off job and if you've got lots of landscaping to do and you want to use polystyrene it strikes me as quite a good idea. So if I just put this in position now where it kind of should sit which sits about there you might think this is the end of the video but in true Blue Peter style, here's one we made earlier. And using three different tones of green for these three small fields, you get a kind of impression that, you know, our landscape isn't all one green colour. I just now need to fit a few trees, hed uh, hedges, fence posts and perhaps livestock, tractor and that kind of stuff on this front field um, to bring it to life. And when you run a camera through the cutting you can see how much more interesting it is with the retaining walls on both sides and the kind of the pillars kind of give it depth and bring it to life. Well that just about wraps up this video. I hope you've enjoyed it and uh, it's nice to do a how-to video which actually is quite constructive to my layout as well. So hopefully if you're watching on the YouTube app there'll be a video here and a video there and please don't forget to subscribe. In the meantime, uh, take care and I'll see you at the next one. Thanks a lot and bye bye.